Hey guys, welcome to episode 4. I've been playing Paper Mario Origami King. The world is incredibly captivating. There's a ton of different varieties. There's open world bits almost at points. There's like this boat that you can drive around on the open ocean and visit all these different islands. I believe it's time to give our headless boy a face. Find a couple of images of Kakashi's head. I found two that were as close to orthographic front and side view as possible. Add a cube, scale it down in edit mode. Scale it up on the Z axis to roughly box in his head. Add an edge loop down the middle. Delete half of the head. Add a mirror modifier and enable clipping. Add a subdivision modifier and disable optimal display. In side view, add an edge loop down the side of his head. Scale on the Y axis. Move stuff around to try to approximate the head shape. Select this back face and extrude it downwards. Position the vertices roughly. Extrude the bottom face down and scale it. Position the front vertices and then delete the bottom face. Move the back vertices in a bit. Adjust the head shape and narrow his chin and neck. When you get it close to the reference, apply the modifiers. Delete half of the face, add a mirror modifier again. Hide everything except for the face. In side view, do some edge sliding. Pull this top loop down. Try to line these vertices up with the contour of his face. Continue positioning things as I'm doing here. When modeling something like a face, Sometimes it helps to have multiple 3D views active. Click and drag the upper right corner of the viewport to add another panel. If you hold shift while adding the second panel, it will appear in a new window and you can make use of multiple screens if you have them. You can get rid of these extra tabs by click dragging from one corner over the panel you want to get rid of. I oftentimes have an additional view on my second screen to keep track of how my model is looking. I'm going to zoom in on the face and put one pane in front view and one in side view. So now we're going to start moving stuff around and adding geometry until it looks like a face. I tried having his lips jut out more, like the side reference, but I didn't care for it as much. So I kept his lips rather subtle. I'm going to be sliding stuff around and trying to decide how I want it to look. Add an edge loop in here to add some geometry. Make sure clipping is enabled. Just slightly move the back of his jaw in towards the center of his face. Add another edge loop in here and just kind of shape his nose. Use the knife tool to kind of cut in his mouth. Add another edge loop in here. And use the knife tool to add some more geometry to his nose. Add another partial edge loop above his nose. Cut here with the knife tool. And kind of mirror it underneath with the knife. Pull the edge closest to the middle forward so that his nose isn't sharp. And then smooth out his nose a bit. I don't think this edge is needed. I want a little more geometry, so cut in one more line here. Cut in the middle of his lips. Shape his chin and jaw a bit more. I think this is good for now. Use the knife tool to add a loop of geometry to his face, and another one here. Add two edges with J and dissolve this edge and might as well cut in another edge here. I did a lot of adjustments for a while. Box modeling a face can be laborsome, but if you're not comfortable with sculpting, it's a good skill to have. Let's add some eyes. Select these edges and dissolve them. Back to the knife tool. We're gonna cut his brow in. Cut around here. Add another line around here. And we'll probably want another edge loop in here. Now, start shaping the eye area. There's an edge from the top of his head here, so delete it and add this face back in. It'll probably look better if I move all of this over. The top of his head looks ridiculous right now, but it doesn't matter, because most of it will be deleted. Also, delete this weird face if you have one. Now, do some fine tuning. I'm gonna shift a lot of these vertices forward. This was one of my first attempts at making Kakashi's face, and for how much practice I had beforehand, I was super happy with how well it was coming along. Cut in some edges here, and delete these two partial edge loops. 
If you're having trouble placing these, use the left side of the front reference. We're trying to frame his eyes in on both references. This doesn't need to be exact, but the smoother the vertices flow in every direction, the overall better. Select all and smooth shade the face. And it's not looking too bad so far. I know this might be shocking, but I'm going to fine tune some more. Flatten out all these vertices up here. Use the knife tool to cut in another edge here and shift a few vertices slightly. And by a few vertices, I mean like all of these. And by slightly, I mean very slightly. Barely worth mentioning, really. Select all and recalculate outside. There's some ugly shading along the border of the face since we've neglected most of his head. So there's all these irregular faces along it, but it's cool. Let's slim down his face a bit. Delete these vertices and extrude out new faces. Hit Alt-H to unhide. Select these faces and separate by selection with P. Then hide this other head object. Cut an edge loop in on the neck. Alt select this edge loop and dissolve it. Move these vertices down. And extrude up several faces. Select these four vertices and make a face with F. Select all and recalculate outside. Smooth shape. Now do some shaping on the neck. Some sh sh shaping, some sh some shaping. Extrude this vertex and make a face here. Do the same around the entire back of the head. I have an extra edge on the chin that isn't on the neck. Select these two and use J to connect them. Then dissolve these two edges. You can divide up this face with quads if you prefer. Shape his neck so that it'll cover enough of his collar without leaving any open holes. And that's probably good enough or whatever. Then make any last adjustments that you can't live without. I'll not be able to live without a lot of these adjustments. It's a medical thing. You'd probably not understand. I'm feeling fairly happy with this, so I'm going to check it under the lighting. Looks good to me! Let's move on to making the headband. Move the cursor to origin if it isn't. Add a 16 vertice circle. Position and scale it. Extrude down, extrude again, and scale. Extrude the top up and scale. Go into wireframe mode so the reference is visible. And line it up with one side. Rotate it into its rough place. Enable proportional editing with O, and drag stuff around to match the reference. Just kind of eyeball it. Attempt to maintain a slight oval shape. Try to place it so that it doesn't cut into his face at all. I disabled the visibility of my light plane so that it wasn't in the way. Add a subdivision modifier and keep moving stuff around. Select all and smooth shade. His headband gets thinner in the back, so do some shifting and scaling. Enable snapping the faces and snap some of these vertices to his face. Add any geometry as necessary to keep from cutting into his head. Continue match it to the reference and do your best to decide how it should look. Let's make a quick tie for the back of his headband. Add a cube, scale it down, add three edge loops. Grab the top face with proportional editing on, rotate it on the Z axis. Adjust the fall off so it twists like so. Smooth shade and add a subdivision modifier. Add an edge loop in here and with proportional fall off scaled significantly down, scale this edge loop down on the X and Y axis. Add another cube and scale it down. Flatten it on the Y axis. Add in several edge loops and scale them apart on the Z axis. Scale on the X axis. Select the top face and scale it even further on the X axis and scale the bottom face. Add a subdivision modifier. Control R to place three vertical edge loops. Select these four faces and scale them in on the Y axis. Then select these faces and scale them out on the Y axis. Select the top faces and pull them up like so. Pull this edge out. Add an edge loop. Using the knife tool, cut some of these edges in on the back side. Select these inner vertices and move them inwards on the Y axis. Select the bottom faces, scale them a bit, and extrude downwards. And scale these edges on the X-axis. 
copy this object and scale by negative 1 on the Z axis, select these three objects, position, scale, and rotate. Maybe give them some variation. I just kind of winged these shapes and I think it turned out alright. I lost the footage of making his ears, so I'm going to real quick try to recreate how I did it. Nothing too amazing. Basically place a plane and then extrude out vertices to trace his ear. Doesn't matter how you do this, just make sort of a loop. And then, make another sort of loop in here by placing vertices and filling in faces as you go. I somehow got a stray edge in here, so I deleted it. Once you get about here, just try to fill in this open hole. I tried to go with all quads. With everything filled in, select this outer loop and extrude it. Alt select these outer vertices, scale them slightly. Shape down here to make a slightly smoother ear to head connection area. And then move stuff around with proportional editing to make it look like an ear. If you want, you can select here and extrude these faces to make this flappy thing. It's called a tragus. I looked it up, you're welcome. Move stuff around, it doesn't really matter. Add a subdivision modifier. Select this outer loop, extrude and scale by zero. Add another edge loop in here for good measure. Shade smooth, looks like a simple ear to me. Filling in blank parts of the world, fixing the holes as you go along, there's all these, it's like all of the best of Nintendo games. It's collect-a-thon, but collect-a-thon that doesn't lead to anything. You don't have to go collect all the toads to get to the next level. You just can if you want to, and it's fun. I, I love this. I love it. It's the best. I'm at a casino right now. I love it. It's so cute. Oh my god, I love it.